Alright, what is going on everybody? It's John here and I am back with another commentary and today I am going to be giving you guys my honest review of the Black Ops Cold War beta. As of recording this video, it is Monday, the final day of the beta, which by the way, it should have ended today, but out of the blue, Treyarch decided to be nice and extended by giving us one extra day, so thank you Treyarch. Not only that, but Treyarch was extra nice by unlocking all attachments for all weapons, allowing us to freely make any class setup we want for any weapon and double xp continues for ranking up your rank this is amazing especially for the people that weren't able to play the beta that much and level up as many weapons as the hardcore grinders did and that's another thing i want to talk about <laughs> I'd imagine that the hardcore grinders are receiving this as a sucker punch to the face by Treyarch. I know for a fact that many people took the time to level up every single weapon in the beta and without double weapon XP, that is no joke. It takes forever just to level up once for any weapon. So to do all that only to find out that all of the attachments would be unlocked on the final day or not even the final day but on an extended day? Yeah, that's another jab to the face. <laughs> Either way, it shouldn't be viewed as a problem. This is just the beta, so I am very happy that Treyarch decided to do this. And if you guys haven't reached rank 10 to unlock the mutual animosity blueprint for the Milano, you still have an extra day, at least as of recording this video. By the time I upload it, it will be over. But anyways, guys, after playing the beta for both weekends, weekend number one and weekend number two, I feel ready to give you guys my honest review of the beta overall and basically tell you guys what I thought about it and what I would like to see get fixed or maybe added. I know we got an extra day which I will be taking advantage of after I'm done making this review and I know you guys might be thinking why don't you just play today and then make the review next time. Well today it is a very special day because I have no homework due tonight. <laughs> a rare occasion so yeah it's perfect for me to make a review which I am ready for and it's also perfect for me to be able to get on and play on the final day of the beta so with that being said let's just go ahead and get started. So I want to start off by saying that the beta was definitely an upgrade from the alpha. We got a couple new things that we didn't have back in the alpha such as new weapons, new maps, new modes, new playlists, etc. We got 21 weapons for the beta, which I will quickly name them all. We had 4 assault rifles, which were the XM4, the AK-47, the Krig-6, and the QBZ-83. 4 SMGs, the MP5, the Milano A21, the AK-74U, and the KSP-45. 2 tactical rifles, the M16 and the Type 63. 2 LMGs, the RPD and the Stoner 63. 2 sniper rifles, the LW3 Tundra and the Peloton 703. Two shotguns, the Gallo SA-12 and the Howard 77. Three pistols, the 1911, the Diamati and the Magnum. And two launchers, the Sigma-2 and the RPG-7. To me, this is a perfect amount, if I'm not mistaken. For the Alpha, we had 17 weapons, so we got four new weapons for the Beta. And again, this is a perfect amount because if we were to have gotten a lot more, most of the weapons, by the time the full game comes out, will not feel new. It won't feel like a new experience since we already used them in the beta. I just wanted to mention this real quickly because, surprisingly, a lot of people were complaining about the amount of weapons we got for the alpha and beta. I mean, <laughs> it's not a given that we're going to be getting a bunch of weapons. I mean, it's just a beta and an alpha, so if we get even 10 to 15 weapons, that is good. At least we're gonna have more new surprises by the time the full game releases. As you guys may know already, my favorite weapon was the AK-47. I made two videos, one titled the good old AK-47, and the second one, I almost dropped a nuke with this. And that was my best class setup for the AK-47. Unfortunately, I did not use every weapon in the beta, which I apologize. I know I said in my alpha review that I was gonna be using every weapon this time around, but it's a little disappointing because there is a great possibility that there's another better weapon that I missed out on. And I say this because in the alpha, the AK-47 wasn't my favorite weapon. It was the AK-74U and that was because I never used the AK-47. Then the beta came, I used the AK and then it became my favorite weapon. So yeah, I don't know. I probably missed out on the better weapon. Maybe the Krig-6, the Milano, <laughs> I'm not sure. For now though, the AK-47 is going to be my go-to weapon by the time the full game launches, unless 
There is a better weapon that is obviously way better, like the Commando. If I see the Commando, okay, we might have to change things around. If I'm not mistaken, we had three playlists, which were Quick Play, Combined Arms, and Fire Team, which is the newest mode that came out yesterday as of recording this video. The main playlist I was on was Quick Play, which consists of Team Deathmatch, Domination, Kill Confirmed, Hardpoint, and Control from Black Ops 4. We have four maps for this 6v6 playlist, which were Miami, Satellite, Moscow, and the newest map, Cartel, that we did not have back in the alpha. If I had to rank these maps from best to worst, it would be number one Satellite, number two Cartel, number three Moscow, and number four Miami. I still firmly believe that Satellite is the best map in the beta since it is good for everything. Long range engagements, close combat engagements, score streaks since it's a very wide open map, you name it. I was very close to putting Cartel at number one since this is a very good map, but I still put Satellite as number one. Moscow, that was number three because it's a great map, but not the best for score streaks, especially a chopper gunner and a napalm strike, just way too many buildings. And Miami was last for obvious reasons. For combined arms, we had two modes, which were combined arms domination, which was 10v10 domination, and combined arms assault, which Let's just say that this is kind of like domination and hardpoint mix, but if you capture the first objective and don't capture the next one, you will be set back one objective to the previous location, if that makes sense. Of course, since this was 10v10, it had its own maps, which were Armada, Crossroads, and even Cartel. For obvious reasons, Cartel was the best map for this playlist. Very action-packed and chaotic, lots of explosions going on, high kill gameplays, you name it. I will say that Armada had a very unique layout since you could zipline from one boat to another, but I did not really like the map since it was very camper-friendly. A lot of people would stay in the back and snipe, so it was a sniper's paradise, and oh my goodness, guys when I would zip line <laughs> I cannot tell you how many times I got shot off. And Crossroads don't even get me started with that map. I never played it and I hopefully won't ever play it because from what I've heard, it is very hard to see people. It is the biggest map and it's just, yeah, it's random. I don't even know what to say about this map. I thoroughly enjoyed the score streaks and new score streak system. At first I thought I was going to hate it since it kind of looked like requisitions from World War II, but in the end, I actually ended up enjoying it. My three favorite streaks were the Spy Plane, the Napalm Strike, and the Chopper Gunner. At first, it was the spy plane, the artillery, and the attack helicopter, but after I unlocked the napalm strike and especially the chopper gunner, I had to make that change. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of the chopper gunner from Black Ops 1 when you swing that door open and just get into action. Now the gameplay was very enjoyable. In fact, I thought it was more enjoyable for the beta than it was back in the alpha, especially for the crossplay beta. Many of the changes we asked for back in the alpha were made, such as sliding being a little too overpowered, so Treyarch decided to nerf it a little bit, make it less too crazy <laughs> make it feel less like a, of a G slide from Black Ops 3 than a normal slide from Modern Warfare and Black Ops 4 the snipers oh my goodness guys the snipers were quote-unquote nerfed but honestly I do not see where the nerf was I mean the snipers wow those were probably my worst enemies in the alpha not the war machine users not the campers, not the people that like to blow me up with a rocket launcher or camp in the corners, no, it was the snipers. I'm not saying to nerf the snipers completely to the ground, but again, it's just not fair when you have to load in five to seven bullets into an enemy and all it takes for him to do is just one shot you with the sniper and you're dead. And <laughs> oh my goodness, guys, that is very infuriating. I probably rage quitted like five times in this beta because of snipers. Fortunately, from what I've heard, Treyarch may be doing another weapon tuning for the snipers, possibly nerfing them just a teeny bit but I'm not really sure if this is true if it is that's great but again I don't want the snipers to be completely nerfed to the ground and become unusable no I just hope that they maybe increase the ADS speed by a little bit more that would make it a lot more fair I mean it's funny people are rushing with snipers more in Cold War than people with regular weapons in Modern Warfare I mean think about that also another great addition that I really enjoyed and I'm surprised not many people are talking about but that is the new stats option that you can view for each of your weapons from being able to see exactly how many more or less milliseconds it'll take to sprint with a weapon with certain attachments on to how many more milliseconds will it take to ADS with the weapon with a specific attachment on, all of these details are now available. This is without a doubt the most detailed weapon stat system that we have ever seen in any Call of Duty game. We no longer need to go on the website to see exactly how many more milliseconds this and that. No, we all have it now in the game. Now I want to talk about a few things I hope to see by the time the full game launches. The first one being weapon inspections. At this point, I feel like weapon inspections 
missions should be a given in every Call of Duty game. Ever since World War II introduced them, I've always enjoyed them since they make for a very great way for content creators to make thumbnails. I've always taken advantage of this and made some very nice thumbnails because I personally do not have a professional editing software for photos slash thumbnails like Photoshop. Not only that, but if we're going to be able to deck out our weapons with eight attachments since we have the gunfighter wild card and you could literally deck out your weapons with all attachments it would be very nice for us to be able to inspect the weapon and see exactly how it looks. To further support that, we are going to be seeing the return of blueprints. We already see the Ring 10 reward, which is the Mutual Animosity blueprint for the Milano. Of course, we're going to want to be able to inspect these blueprints and see how beautiful they look. And we also have Mastery Camels like Gold, Diamond, and Dark Matter, which we obviously will. Of course, we're also going to want to be able to inspect that and see what it looks like when you're holding it in your hand. So. Yeah guys, I really hope that weapon inspections make a return this year. I'm pretty sure they will according to the rumors, but I heard that they were going to be available as early as the alpha if I'm not mistaken. So when I didn't see it in the alpha, I was a bit worried, but at the same time, I know they'll make a return. The second thing I would like to see return is the firing range from World War II. I am very surprised that we have not seen something like this in previous COD titles like Black Ops 4 and Modern Warfare. I've always thought the firing range was a great addition in World War II because not only were you able to check out your weapons but you could also test them out by shooting at targets and seeing exactly how much recoil you have. I was very shocked when I heard that Modern Warfare would not have a firing range since we have a very advanced gunsmith system in Modern Warfare so to not be able to check out your weapon and see exactly how it'll work with all these attachments on was pretty disappointing. And finally, I would like to see the return of small three lane maps like Nuketown, Firing Range, Summit, etc. Now some of the maps we got did have a three lane layout but they were a little too big like Moscow and Satellite, if I'm not mistaken these maps were a bit designed like a three lane map but they were a little too big. I know many people used to complain about three lane maps and how they got super repetitive and we don't want to see them no more, but I'm pretty sure many people that used to say that now change their minds and want to see three lane maps again. I'm not saying that all the maps we got were garbage, no, in fact, I liked all the 6v6 maps, even Miami. It's not like I would never play Miami ever again, it's just that I would prefer any other map over Miami, but if I had to play it, I'll play it. I just personally prefer three lane maps since they're very rusher friendly, making them very fast paced, and and we get less time limit gameplays and more score limit gameplays. But anyways guys, that is pretty much going to be my review for the Black Ops Cold War beta. Again, for the most part, I had a ton of fun playing this beta. The only time I would get frustrated was when I would die to a sniper or SBMM was very thick. And I know, I didn't even talk about SBMM in this video, but you know what guys? There's really no point in talking about SBMM. I highly doubt that it will be lowered when the full game launches. I mean. From what I've heard, there's a new dedicated system for it, so <laughs> that just goes to show that SBMM will still be here and it probably won't be removed for a very long time. Anyhow, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to drop a like if you guys enjoyed, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and turn on post notifications so you guys are notified every single time whenever I upload. We are very close to 600 subscribers. As of recording this video, we are 22 subscribers away, and I cannot thank you guys enough. It really means a lot to me, and I appreciate all of your guys' support. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought about the beta overall if you were on ps4 what did you think about it from weekend number one and weekend number two and if you were on xbox and pc what did you think about it in the weekend that you were able to play it? honestly guys i am very excited i cannot wait for the full game to release already to see everything that will be associated with it zombies multiplayer warzone campaign pretty much everything <laughs> this is going to be a very exciting year so yeah, guys, for the last time, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, make sure to drop a like and hope you guys have a nice and wonderful Thursday. And without that being said, it's been John, ready to get back on the grind and ready for that Black Ops Cold War. And I'm out. Peace.